Hi, have you and your child been struggling to make informed career choice? If so, this is the channel for you. My name is Ndibo Chivase and I'm the host of Complacency Learning, the show that helps learners change their attitude towards learning for better and help them turn their dreams into reality. Ladies and gentlemen, on today's episode, we are joined by transformational coach Beth Snyder, who is here to share with us what it means to, to let go of the past hurts and move on forward with your life. Hi Beth and welcome to another episode of Complacency Learning. How are you doing today? Wonderful, thanks. Thank you so much for inviting me. Awesome. Well, you know, we I, I I believe that, you know, we have to work together to help our children make informed career decisions, you know. So that's why I reach out to as many people as I can, you know, people that have been there with experiences like like you are, you know. So um before we, we begin, mm. can I just ask um you to tell us a bit about yourself? Okay, so I'm a transformation and life coach and I own Wildflower Transformation Coaching. So I help primarily women who are at risk of stress and burnout and helping them let go of uh, the past, helping them reconnect with themselves and re reignite their passion again. Um, but prior to that, I was um, actually a manager in finance at one of the largest trading companies and in banking for many years. So I have a history in a different field altogether. Mm. Um, yes, so <laughs> that's me in a small nutshell. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great profile that you have, eh? <laughs> I see, so uh, you've been working in banking and, and you said you have like a transformational coach, right? So looking at that, yes. if I may ask, what is the one thing you wish you had, you had known before you began with those careers? So when it comes to my initial career, I fell into finance um, I didn't, I decided not to go to university because I wasn't sure what to study. I took a gap year and after the end of the first gap year, I was like, oh, I'll actually, I must go find a proper job. And I started working in banking um, from a young age. I was 19 at the time. Mm. So I kind of just fell into it. And um, I, I had a passion for actually working with people as when I was younger, I wanted to become a psychologist, but for various reasons, I decided not to do that mm. and went into my sort of um, banking and finance career head on. And within 12 years, I ended up um, having a, a burnout and it was at that point that I was like, what have I actually done? You know, like I followed what everyone says you should do, have mm. the, the great job, the car, the house, the husband, the kids, and all of these things that people tell you you should have. Mm. But inside, I'm not, I have actually feel really lost. And I was like, well, I actually wanted to be a psychologist. Let me look into coaching. I had to come across a lot of coaches. And that's kind of how I went, I uh, transitioned into that, that career. So what I wish I'd known before was that, um, you know, I think we think we have to go to university to to um, have a good job, but I think the world is changing quite fast, you know, mm. and follow your heart sometimes. Don't do what you think you should do, because often that's just what society is placed on us. And it's not necessarily what's going to make you happy. And it's not necessarily what you're supposed to be giving to the world. Mm, mm. so i wish i'd known that so <laughs> wow hey there's so many things that we wish we had done before we began with our careers hey <laughs> it's funny how people are what people yes. come up with and even, <laughs> yeah sorry yes think? exactly yeah. even when i went into coaching like uh, yeah. even starting your own business i wish i had known a lot more about what to expect i mean it's such a big development mm. process it really is it changes you and changes mm. your life and mm. um, and i'm glad i did it but I wish I'd known a little bit more before I went into just um, uh, how much I was going to, what I was getting myself into, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, those 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 uh, lonely nights, you know, those uh, rejections, you know, when you come, when you're trying to, you know, build a brand, you know, I can understand those that uh, the pain that you went through. hundred you know? <laughs> percent. It's it's not nice, yes, but at the yeah, same time, and putting it yourself us. out there and mm. yes. Mm. It builds us. It's an amazing personal development journey, mm. becoming an entrepreneur and building a brand. It really is. So, yeah. <laughs> I, I absolutely um, agree with you on that one. Right. So moving on to the next question, what is your biggest failure and what did you learn from it? 
So for me, what felt like my biggest failure at the time was having that a burnout in my early 30s. I, mm. I felt like I was weak. I felt like I couldn't manage and that there was something wrong with me. Mm. You know, and you start to think that you're broken, mm. but you know, it wasn't actually a failure. And I think this is something awesome I've learned about failure from also going into coaching and all that stuff is that there is no such thing really as failure. It, it's a lesson. It's something you learn. And burning out for me was one of the biggest turning points in my life. And it really sent me down a road of self-discovery, of letting go of past hurts, and then of becoming what I believe I was meant to be in the world. And so no, failures often seem like the, a huge like detour at the time, or they feel like it's the end of the world at the time, but often it's a redirection and sending you down the right path. And um, so I think, yeah, at the time that felt like a big failure, but it actually turned out to be one of the best things that ever happened to me. So. Wow. So speaking of uh, what you call, um, um, what you just mentioned now, you know, letting go of the, the, the past hurts, right? I know that uh, there's a quote that I came across that says, you cannot move, you cannot move forward looking backwards. I think that was by Barack Obama. So it's, it's, it's something mm, that I, yes. I definitely agree with you on, on, you know. So I feel like, you know, it's amazing that you actually brought it up, right? So now yes, looking at your yes. careers, right? So what advice would you give to somebody that wants to pursue the same career as yours? So I would say um, for someone going into finance, uh, uh, I, I think I'd rather speak about if a lot of people nowadays are actually wanting to go into coaching or wanting to change path, you know. So I think when it comes to that, number one, just make sure that if you, you're going to study something new, that you, you go for something that's um, legitimate, that's going to be um, really in depth and that they also look at your, you and your development because a lot of coaches that are, I think they, that you can go and you to me and you can get a coaching certification but it doesn't necessarily mean that you've done the work on yourself you know and I think that's very important if you want to help people you have to do also a lot of work on yourself and letting go of your past like we've been speaking about so definitely that but then also be prepared like i think um just jumping into something it takes time to to develop a brand it takes time to develop um customers and um, some people are lucky and it just happens overnight but you know you do need to get yourself out there people need to know and like and trust you so it's really about um you know taking some time and having some financial backing in the background that allows you to do that so either starting off on the side or saving up for it and then doing it because that these things don't necessarily happen overnight and going into business and becoming an entrepreneur when you've been an employee takes a bit of mindset change because you now are responsible for everything and you are responsible for making everything work mm. and then if you're wanting to go into uh, in, into a career in corporates i think things are changing so fast you know and what is corporate going to look like in 10 years time i don't think we actually know so mm -hmm. i think this is where we need to start reimagining things especially for the young people nowadays is like we can't be forcing them to do the same thing we did as parents for example um, because the future is going to look very different for our children and it's about rather developing their confidence and developing yourself so that you're able to be resilient enough to handle whatever comes next. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yo, so I know, like, you know, being an entrepreneur, <laughs> just to add to what you said, right? So you need to actually let that that pain, you know, like, you know, like when you hear no a thousand times, it becomes like normal. So it has to be like that on you as yes. well. Right? So that by the time you hear that, yes, you jump for joy and then you feel like it's worth it. Because I mean, rejections that you go through, hey. <laughs> <laughs> they're not easy eh? they exactly even... <laughs> you have to yeah. build it's tough yeah. skin <laughs> yeah. it is it is yeah and for every no you get in the beginning you'll get mm. 40 yeses later on down the line but mm. i think a lot of the time people give up too quickly you know mm. because they think that it's not working but you just mm. you're really just at the edge of getting there mm. and you have to kind of hold out sometimes for for that and some people have to give up because they don't take into consideration the financial and that backing you might need to be able to continue to do that so i think it is about being sensible um not all of us can just quit our jobs and go and do whatever we want you know so it's about taking that into consideration and um then allow being okay with the nose because mm. you learn from the nose and then you become better and mm. yeah so <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Great. So they say either pain teaches you or you can let it break you. So you just have to let it teach you, you know, so. Um, teach you 100%. Yes. <laughs> awesome. So <laughs> if I may ask, uh, what are the best resources that have best helped you um, along the way? So personally, it has been going into sort of coaching, going into mm-hmm. to sort of journey of self-discovery and of letting go. Like I've had my own coaches, you know, I've had my own people that I've gone to who have helped me on that journey. And I think for me, that's been the best resources I've had is having those people that have reflected back to me what I need to let go of so that I can move forward mm-hmm. and really align myself to let go of a lot of things from the past that I didn't realize I was holding on to. So I think that for me has been the best resources is having that. Then there's so many great courses like mm-hmm. You know, I've I've decided to be a lifelong learner. We don't need to stop learning. Um, mm. Just because we finished school or we finished university, mm. I really have found that doing these courses online, reading, you know, it's actually keeps you developing, keeps you seeing things from a different perspective. So those things for me have been wonderful resources. Mm-hmm. So you did mention that, you know, you were um, also influenced by people around you, right? So speaking of that, mm-hmm. um, who are the three people that have, uh, that, that have influenced you the most? So definitely my mom and my gran have, mm-hmm. are two of the people that have definitely were part of, um, of who influenced me the most. My gran was a very small lady, but a firecracker. And mm. my mom has taught me love and compassion and empathy, which I think you really need as a, as a coach. And um, then the, uh, the other people have, I've had a couple of different various coaches who have re- literally changed my life, you know, mm. and so they have really been people who have been the turning point in my life. So. Mm. And then uh, speaking of the myth, you know, like every prof- pro- uh, profession has like a myth, right? Like I-, I like to use the one of a teacher as an example, right? So they say teachers work mm-hmm. lesser hours compared to other professions, of which is, is false because, I mean, teachers have to sit and mark those papers. They have to prepare the mm-hmm. lessons and everything, right? So what is the one common myth about your profession that you would like to expose the falseness of? So specifically with coaching um, and life coaching, a lot of people think it's you just go to a coach to go and um, set goals and move towards your goals. But if, if they actually, it's not the case. That's not that's very old school life coaching. Oh, like lots of coaches that do just that. And that's perfectly fine. A lot of people want to be successful and want to reach certain goals. But before doing that, you also need to work out what's stopping you from getting where you want to go and what is it in your past and the beliefs that you have that you need to let go of so coaching isn't just about setting goals and trying to reach your goals Mm -hmm. for some for some people that is what it is but it's not what a lot of coaches are doing for example in transformation coaching it's a goes a lot deeper into what's happening in your subconscious mind that is stopping you from moving forward Mm -hmm. Uh, so it's not we don't even set your goals until later on once we've worked out what is it that you need to let go of first um, and look at your life in a holistic way not just like what is the one thing I want to get in my business or but how's that going to affect the rest of your life you know and I think that's kind of where there's a lot of myths around it Mm, that's that's great actually (laughs) right so moving Mm -hmm. on to the next question right if you could step into my shoes what is it that you would have asked yourself that I did not? So one of the things that I thought you could potentially ask people is just around the future of education and where you see it going, because mm. that's a very great to- to- um, topic because things are changing so quickly mm. um, and we can't carry on educating our kids the way that we were educated because mm. uh, the, that's, that's a system that's been in place for hundreds of years that needs, uh, that needs to be changed. And mm. even university, like, all of that's going to have to change at some point to work out where we're going as a society and where we're going um, for the future. So, mm, mm. great, actually. Um, yes. I like I like what you just said. Now, I think it's very important that we, we bring it out. You know, we bring it out there. You know, as you know, sometimes English. Yes. But we bring it out there. You know, <laughs> right. So, uh, moving to the next one, right. So, to our for our listeners, where, where can they connect with you online? So I'm on LinkedIn, Facebook, and also on Instagram. So I'll give you the details so that you can put it underneath and they can contact with, get in contact with me there. Um, yeah, I, I have, I like, enjoy being on social media and giving stuff away to people for free. I, I'm quite, I like writing 
and I think words have a way of helping people heal. So yes, I I've, I like putting things out on on social media, so you can follow along on those those platforms. Great, right? You notice the word um, learning, right? So I think learning goes with 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 uh, patience and passion. Right, so yeah. it's it's something that that one needs to dedicate themselves to, right? Because because it's a process, right? So to you, what does this mm-hmm. word mean? For me, it's a devotion to, mm. and I think it's about allowing yourself to be a lifelong student. Mm. Um, a lot of us become t- teachers as we develop in our careers, as we develop in our lives. But mm. if you're going to be the teacher, you have to. Be, it's a dedication to becoming a lifelong student. And I really, for me, I think it's about a devotion to constantly be willing to know that there's more for you to learn. There's not just what you're seeing, there's mm. what you're not seeing that's also there that's available to you. So, mm-hmm. Right, so um, before you go, um, I just want to ask you, is it, is, it pos- is it fine for you to actually um, tell us more about the transformational program that you're running and like, how does it work? What is it that you really do, you know? Yes, of course. So I I have one-to-one coaching that I do with people, which, you know, we work together one-on-one and we go deep into everything using transformation coaching program. And that is about going deep into the subconscious mind and finding out what's holding you back, what emotions you need to let go of and so forth. Mm-hmm. And then um, I also have an online course called Wildflower in Bloom, which I'm actually about to launch again in March. And that is for overachieving women who are are at risk of stress and burnout to just help them let go, reconnect and reignite your passion. And that's really something I'm very passionate about helping women with. Mm. And then I'm just about to actually, um, I am a lifelong learner and I'm about to certify in what's called rapid transformational therapy. Mm-hmm. which is a award winning therapy by Marissa Pierre. And mm-hmm. I'm going to be adding that as part of my, um, my programs and offerings, which is really to help people with specific issues that are really holding them back in their lives and um, help them find the root cause so they can let it go and move forward. So, mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. I think I think um, the reason why most of us struggle to move forward, like you said, we hold on to the uh, past hurts, and sometimes we don't even realize that they're the ones that are actually, you know, um, stepping mm-hmm. in the way. They're the ones that are they're, they're actually the potholes towards this road that we walk in. You know, so judging from what you said, I can say it sounds yeah. like the program is really great. You know that that it gives people like you know um, the reason to to move forward. You know, it 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 actually you said you actually go deep down into the roots and find out what's causing it so you can unplug it and make sure that you move exactly. forward right so um mm-hmm. for me i think it's something that's very recommendable yes. it's something that i'm also gonna look at you know <laughs> right, so, <laughs> yeah thank you <laughs> awesome so if i may ask is there anything that you would like to add just thank you for having me and i love everything that you're doing and yeah like we we do need to like i say continue to be lifelong learners and allow ourselves to be open to not always thinking that we know because we've learned something and open to that there's always something more to learn and always something more to see from a different perspective so Thank you so much for that uh, great feedback hey so i just i just also <laughs> want to say <laughs> You. Thank you. So I also just want to say, you know, I, I understand that we live in a busy world and, and also at the same time you have a daughter who's ill and I can understand that, you know, the time is actually limited on your side, right? So, and I just want to say thank you for actually, you know, considering coming here to actually share with us, you know, and steer us into the the right direction it really means a lot because we feel we believe that it's going to uh, touch the hearts of many, although we don't know how many and how much, but we do believe that uh, they are gonna i mean it is gonna touch the hearts of many actually <laughs> right so um <laughs> thank you so without further ado allow for <laughs> me to wish you a lovely day and also uh, a speedy recovery for your daughter i hope that she comes okay thank you so soon, much you know so that you can also you know relax especially when it comes to because i can understand the frustrations that you're going to now you know <laughs> that you're going through it's it's a lot i mean yeah but, uh, we're all juggling and it's yeah. it is it's part of life yeah of even life. yeah but yeah. thank you so much i appreciate it <laughs> uh, thanks a lot hey and keep safe <laughs> thank you bye perfect cheers keep well <laughs> thanks you too bye bye
We do believe you have enjoyed today's episode as always. And guys, please remember to like and subscribe so you are notified when a new episode is posted. And remember guys to follow us on our social media platforms, LinkedIn, Facebook and Instagram. And if you would like to know more about uh, Beth Nader and what she does and her transformational uh, program, please do get in touch with her at the, on the details that is provided at the bottom of the screen. And ladies and gentlemen, I want to wish you nothing but the best of the best of life to come.